What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we are checking out the Soldano SLO Mini. It's so cute. Let's do it. guys hope you're doing great out there today if this is your first time here at my channel my name is kyle and what i do is i take awesome high gain amps guitars cabs speakers pickups overdrives i record them through a simple sm57 setup and i give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end so if you're into e-standard thrash riffs dropsy hardcore riffs and dudes that are dreaming about a chicken wing dinner tonight you're in the right place consider hitting the like button and subscribing on your way out so you don't miss any more of my stuff thanks all right guys it is finally here you have asked for this video repeatedly so I am delivering. Today we are checking out the Soldano SLO Mini. Now we have had a brief interaction with this amp on the channel before. I did a little video seeing if this thing could hang in a band setting. So if you wanna see if it was uh, capable of hanging with a loud drummer, guitarist in a hardcore setting, I'm gonna put a little card up here for you guys to click the link on that video and check it out. But this video here is just to check out the tonal capabilities of this 30 watt Soldano SLO Mini through my standard Mesa Traditional V30 loaded 4x12 cabinet. And I am going to be using, as always, my Balliger Typhon with the Seymour Duncan distortion in the bridge. In the intro clip, I had a KHDK Ghoul Screamer on, but we're gonna check this amp out without any boosts in front of it for a minute before we start boosting it all to hell in order to see what it's capable of on its own. And also on this video, a huge, huge thank you to my friends at Sweetwater for sending this amp over. They sent this amp out for me to check out. So if you like the tones that you hear and you've been thinking about buying one of these amps, you guys know that I'm gonna tell you to get it at Sweetwater because Sweetwater is just the absolute best to deal with, not only in terms of customer service, but in terms of return policies, which that is really, really important if you get a piece of gear that you don't like. So they're gonna take care of you and they're gonna get you something that's better suited for you. So as part, of Sweetwater's Guitar Month. Thank you so much for letting me participate. And thank you again to Sweetwater for sending one of these out. If you wanna get one for yourself, affiliate link is down below in the comments. We're gonna go ahead and dive into it though, see what type of sounds we can get out of it. And as somebody who has owned an SLO 100, an SLO 30, as someone who owns the SLO Synergy model, I own an Avenger 100 off in the corner. I'm going to tell you whether I think that this thing kind of captures that spirit of the Soldano SLO tone or if it falls flat. So why don't we go ahead and get into it? To start off, I'm gonna put all the EQ controls back at noon like I do in all of my other videos. We're gonna start on the overdrive channel. I'm gonna kick this gain pretty much down to the off position. And uh, we have a deep normal switch here. I'm gonna put it on normal. Now, as far as features with this amp, on the front here, you can see we have a crunch and an overdrive channel, and we have a normal and the deep switch. On the back, we have an effects loop, which is a nice touch, in my opinion, for something this small. So we're gonna start on the normal setting for the low end, and we're gonna start on the crunch channel. I'm gonna turn this thing on, and we're gonna adjust the gain until we get something coming through the speakers. Okay, with the gain that low, it kind of sounds like an old transistor radio. Let's go ahead and pump the gain up to about nine o'clock. Now, it sounds really thin as we go through the lower end of the gain dial. Let's, real quick, let's just jump it up to noon and see if that fills the amp up at all, or if we're going to have to flip that deep switch in order to get some low end frequencies out of this thing. Okay. 
Okay, so as you can see, we've got a decent amount of saturation, but we have essentially no low end. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the deep switch on. <laughs> And like that, we finally have some low end presence. I am going to back the gain down just a little bit and I'm gonna bump the bass up a little bit in order to kind of fill this thing out a little bit. Say a little bit a few more times and we are gonna leave the deep switch on because this thing sounds really thin and not good with that switch in the normal position in my personal opinion. I don't really see a use for it when it sounds that thin, but I also am not the most dynamic, uh, capable, versatile player out there. So maybe there's just a use case function that I personally am not thinking of for really ultra thin quacky tones. But anyways, let's hear how we have it dialed in now. <laughs> All right, so right off the bat, it is fairly bright. It's got a lot of mid content. We're gonna back the mids down just a little bit because they seem to be a little bit pokey and we're gonna bump the presence up to kind of make up for some of that lack of clarity on the top. <laughs> Immediately, I can tell you, I hear the crunch channel voicing of the SLO in this thing. It is maybe just slightly more saturated and obviously it's a lot more tight because it's a solid state amp. There definitely isn't that tube sag to it. So that is one thing I will knock against it if that is something that you guys are looking for. It definitely does not have the hugeness and the sag of the SLO circuit in it. For me, that's a positive because as a metal player, I like things tight and punchy. This amp is much tighter and punchier than the real deal, so keep that in mind. All right, so overall, not bad. It does sound a tad bit muffled the way that we have it dialed in. We're gonna bump that gain up. All right, so let's actually get a little bit more presence on this thing because there is a little bit of a muffled top end going on at the moment. Although bumping the presence seems to be helping and that kind of actually reminds me quite a bit of the real SLO 100. You have to EQ it kind of similarly in the top end in order to get the blanket over the speakers effect to kind of go away. <laughs> Overall, not a ton of string clarity, especially compared to the original. Um, the, in my opinion, the voicing is there, but it seems to be really, really mid heavy for an SLO circuit. <laughs> Now backing that mid control down definitely helped pretty, uh, pretty quickly. In all honesty, it, got, it definitely got it way closer to what I'm used to hearing from an SLO. <laughs> That is not to say that the SLO is a mid-scooped amp because it is not. It's just this particular little mini has a lot more mid content going on. Let's go ahead and bump that gain up. We're up to about three o'clock. Thank you. 
That is the Crunch Channel with no boost. I will tell you right now, the SLO, the real amp, does not have that much gain on the Crunch Channel, not by a long shot, and it is nowhere near as tight as this is. But with all of that being said, the voicing is there, and I'm kind of preferring this at the moment just because of that tightness and that saturation. This sounds mean, and this is without any boost in front. It is fully capable of tight, thrashy metal tones. Now, the only thing I'm noticing is it is a little bit muffled again. Like I said, a boost really seems to open this thing up, so we're gonna click one of those on in a second before we go over to the overdrive channel. <laughs> Just a little bit more gain and let's see what we have now. Alright, so that sounds pretty good on its own. I am digging this thing so far, but we're gonna roll back that gain a little bit. I'm gonna kick on that KHDK Ghoul Screamer because that seems to hit this amp just right to where it kind of adds a little top end bite and makes it sound really nasty. <laughs> There we go. Now it sounds a little bit more balanced. I'm definitely liking that. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and max out the low end, max out the bass. Okay guys, so again, I think that this sounds awesome. It is missing some low end punch that I would like for it to have, but tonally, the voicing, where the mids are and everything, the way we have it dialed with the boost we have on right now, I'm, I'm digging it, honestly. I really think that this thing sounds cool. Let's try one more boost real quick and then we will move over to the overdrive channel. All right guys, so we now have the Friedman Buxom boost on and let's hear how that sounds. <laughs> All right, I am liking the way that that sounds for sure. Lack of low end is very noticeable, but otherwise, I really like the tones that are coming out of this, guys. It sounds really nasty. Uh, it's got some of that Soldano sparkle to it. It definitely has a similar style of saturation to it. But let's go over to the overdrive channel. I'm gonna put everything back to noon, tune my, turn my boost off, and see what types of tones we can get out of that channel. All right, guys, everything at noon, gain at nine o'clock, deep switch is still on, boost is off. <laughs> And instantly, the mids are much more manageable. Let's go ahead and dial that presence back up. And we've got a good amount of saturation going already, but let's go ahead and bump it up just a little bit. All right, and let's get the middle dialed down just a tab. Let's bump that bass up. It's very easy to make this thing sound harsh. It just has a lot of those high mid frequencies. It's really more about balancing out the treble and the presence, which dialing the treble back and the presence up seems to kind of help. And that also thickens the amp up a little bit, but this amp is definitely way more mid forward and boxy than a regular SLO. <laughs> We've got the mids down at four. Let's dial them up to six just to see what difference that makes. All 
And yeah, it's uh, it's just really overly mid forward. It doesn't, the real SLO definitely does not have that much mid presence. That sounds more realistic to me. Let's get that bass pumped up a little bit more, a little bit more gain. So it definitely is way thicker on this channel. Overall, it still is kind of suffering from some of that clarity and some of that top end blanket over the speakers uh, effect that the Crunch Channel has. Overall, I like the Crunch Channel better, but I kind of wish that I could blend uh, some of the characteristics of the two together. But let's see what difference that KHDK Ghoul Screamer makes on here to see if it can kind of, you know, fix some of the areas on this channel that we don't like or that I don't like. You guys, I have no idea what you guys like. Hopefully something similar. So overall, guys, it's just lacking. It's lacking a little bit. I'm not a huge fan of it, the way that we have dialed in. It's just kind of guttural. The mids are very pokey and kind of annoying on their own. Although that is better rolling them up a little bit. We're gonna dial the treble back just a tad. But the amp on its own just sounds pretty thin. It's almost like an SLO 100 without the depth mod being installed. If you've ever played one without the depth mod, they're kind of thin and that's why everybody installed them and that's why the new uh, boutique amp distributions come with them stock because they can be a little bit on the thin side without that depth rolled up pretty heavily. So it's almost kind of what I'm experiencing in this amp and also on top of that, there are just some annoying mid frequencies that are kind of hard to get rid of and make the amp a little bit harsh. We're gonna go to drop C, play a hardcore riff. We're gonna play one hardcore riff on the Crunch channel. We call it a day on this amp. All right, guys, now let's go over to the Crunch Channel. Oh man, I like the Crunch Channel so much better. Uh, it just sounds more open, it sounds crispier. Same riff and we'll call it a day. guys that is going to do it for me today on the soldano slo mini what did you guys think about it do you have any experience with this amp and if you do what has it been do you own it do you use it in a band setting do you play it at home in your bedroom do you like the tones do you dislike them whatever it is let me know and i will meet you guys down in the comments to chat about it as always thanks so much for watching guys kyle here again if you like the video hit the like button on the way out subscribe hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my future uploads it's been fun hanging We'll see you next time.
You know what this wall is missing? Another amp. There we go.